Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at automating two-factor authentication with Playwright. The short story is you can set up a TOTP library to generate the token you need to enter as part of your 2FA login flow, feed that into a normal Playwright script, and that is mostly it. For this video we're going to use a TOTP library called OTP Auth, but there are other libraries out there, so feel free to pick a different one. As always, if you're going to test scripts you've seen these videos on somebody's website out there, make sure you're not breaching any terms of service by doing that. Let's start by giving a very basic definition of 2FA. An authentication method in which a user is granted access to a website or application only after successfully presenting two or more pieces of evidence. Those pieces of evidence are also called factors. The most common form of this you'll find out there is a combination of login credentials, so a username and password or something similar, and a one-time password or OTP. Time-based one-time passwords uh, or TOTPs are a type of OTPs that uh, uses the current time as a source of uniqueness. Normally you have a single non-reusable code per 30 second time window. The duration of that time window can change, but the code is always single use, i.e. it cannot be reused across different login attempts for the same credential set. It's very important to approach 2FA automation the right way. Keep in mind, and this is very important, you almost surely do not want to test 2FA itself. You want to test some sort of flow that lies behind 2FA. That means, whenever possible, you want to avoid the headache altogether you want to set up somehow a system that allows you to skip that 2FA procedure in the first place so that you can focus on testing what lies behind it. So, you know, you could implement a whitelisting mechanism if that's possible that lets specific traffic through. There's a few ways of doing that. You might just not have 2FA enabled on your test environment. This all depends on what possibilities and constraints are given to you, right? It's very hard here to give a, a general solution that will work for everyone. Uh, when you do not have access to any of those solutions, well, then you might want to have a look at using a TOTP library as we are showing now in this video. For our example here, I'm going to set up 2FA on my Heroku account. There are different verification methods that we could set up. Uh, we're going to go with a one-time password generator. This shows up a QR code that you could scan with applications such as Google Authenticator. In this case, keep in mind, I am just obscuring the QR code just to be sure, uh, but you would be able to see it. You'd be able to, for example, take a screenshot of it and then decode it. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to do because this QR code is uh, containing our secret and also the configuration for the uh, TOTP generation. And that is something that we need to feed into our TOTP library that we're going to use as part of our script. And here I'm uploading a screenshot of that QR code onto Zzing Decoder Online. And as you can see, once we decode that, we're actually able to access everything that we need uh, pretty much in plain text there, right? So we have the secret the algorithm that is used as part of the TOTP generation, the number of digits of the token, and the duration in seconds of the time window that, again, that token will be uh, effective for, right? Okay, so how is login on Heroku gonna look like once we have 2FA set up? Let's go and check it out. I'm gonna hit login here and enter my email address and password. I'm going to hit login and as you can see we're asked to verify our identity and this is where we would actually enter that six digit verification code. Here is where I would normally open my uh, Google Authenticator application, check out the code, copy and paste it here and then go about my day. In this case though we want to again automate this. So let's take one step back and see how we can set this up with Playwright. Here we have a brand new Playwright test project. What we can do now to save ourselves some time is use Playwright CodeGen to record the script for us. So what I'm going to do is going to be an MPX Playwright CodeGen against Heroku.com. Here, of course, I'm going to go through the same procedure. Hit login. Enter my email address and password.
hit login again. And then I want to grab these two selectors. So I'm just going to click in this input field and then hit the verify button. Okay, that should be enough. Just going to stop this recording. I'm going to copy the whole thing and paste it in our test spec file. I'm going to tidy this up a little bit. The second to last instruction is going to become a fill. And this is where our TOTP token should land. So how exactly do we go about getting that TOTP token generated? In this case, we're going to use a library called OTP auth and OTP auth is available on GitHub. We can include it in our project very easily. And you can see already from the example in the readme, uh, a set of configuration parameters that pretty closely matches what we will be using. So first off, I'm going to add OTP auth as a dependency in my package.json. Gonna hit save. We're then going to import it in our test spec. And I'm also going to set up OTP auth so that we can already use it to generate that TOTP token. The idea here is, of course, the most important thing, if you will, is the secret here. And I'm passing that in as an environment variable, pretty much what I'm doing also with my email and password here. So what we'll want to do here is essentially enter our TOTP code in here. First, we'll need a token. We'll just generate one and then add it to our field. Now there's a few things we need to do. Of course, we will have to verify that the script is working fine. In this case, what I'm doing is pre-filling everything at once. So we're going to have to first export our Heroku email and password here. Of course, you will do this with your own credentials. We'll need to actually take the secret from the uh, decoded QR code, right? So the secret is clearly stated there. You will just want to export that as a Roku secret. And you will also want to make sure that the other parameters are set correctly. Again, this is just an example. You will want to refer back to what you decoded. For example, here we can see the uh, digits are matching, so we'll need the token to be generated with six digits and it will be valid for a 30 second time window. Let's make sure everything is saved here and then we'll need to do one more thing actually. We want to first run this single threaded. Uh, what you want to do is make sure that in your Playwright config here you are running using only one configuration. So most likely here we'll just keep Chromium. Comment out Google Chrome. Then we're going to run an npx, well actually pwdebug equals one npx playwright test. We'll be spawning the test with just one worker and then stepping through it. And here we are on the verification screen. We can see our tokens being pasted and we're actually passed to FA. So that worked fine. That is pretty much how you automate to FA. So you're probably asking yourself, why did we actually have to comment out that additional worker there? Well, let's see if I go back here and uncomment the Google Chrome object in this RA, what's going to happen is it's going to spawn two different workers, which are going to run in parallel. What does that mean for 2FA? Let's take a look. Here you can see two tests using two workers. And I'm going to tell you already, one of those is going to fail. Here we've jumped to the point where we're entering the verification code. And here you can see something interesting happening. We are actually reusing the same verification code, but uh, as soon as we've used it on one side, it becomes invalid on the other. This is because these are still one-time passwords, so we cannot reuse the same code within the same time window. TOTP tokens are single use only. This is an important limitation to keep in mind. It's going to limit the amount of tests that you can run in the same time window. This can turn into an issue when you have to run parallel tests or uh, monitoring checks on a certain frequency. A workaround you can use for this is to have multiple credential sets for whatever environment you're testing or monitoring. These are independent logins essentially, and so you will be able to distribute different tests 
across them or, or different monitoring checks across them so that you do not suffer as much in terms of limitations to your number of parallel tests that you can run or the frequency at which your monitoring checks can be executed. I hope that was useful and thanks for watching.